Kivumbi 2017 with just a day to go to the elections and like we've been telling you throughout the past uh, 30 minutes or so, the number of petitions that have been taken to the courts are indeed uh, interesting. It's been a high number, about 10. Uh, we'll continue with our conversation in just a moment and bring in Ishmael Nyaribo who's joining us uh, in just a moment. But in case you're wondering what those petitions are, let's take a look at them uh, and their status at this moment. We want to start off with uh, the one that was dismissed in court today, and that is the one by the MP for Pokot South, David Piko Singh. He wanted Raila Odinga to be compelled to participate in the repeat poll. That case has been dismissed. The High Court judge said it does not meet the threshold of a constitutional petition. Then the Jubilee Party also went to court seeking to have Raila and Kalonzo jailed for contempt of court for not participating in this election as ordered by the Supreme Court, that is with respect to the repeat election. The mention for this will ironically be on the 27th, the day after. Then the Member of Parliament for Uriri Mark Nyamita also went to court claiming uh, that Raila and Musioka security uh, has been withdrawn and needs to be restored before the poll. That's just a day from now. Harun Mwao, who's the former MP for Kilome constituency, um, has also gone to court seeking to stop the electoral management body from running the repeat presidential poll. He says fresh nominations should have been done first. Then there's the Uzalendo Institute of Leadership and Democracy, who are, in essence, seeking interpretation of the Constitution, specifically Article 140, in terms of a fresh election. Just what does it mean? Who should it include? And whether, indeed, uh, we should be starting with fresh nominations. Jude Njomo, who's the MP for Kiambu Township, went to court seeking a clarification on what happens when a candidate withdraws after the Supreme Court has asked for a fresh election. Then you remember this one that took place last week but has since been withdrawn. Abraham Mutai went to the Court of Appeal. He was um, seeking to stop the people but also... Um, uh, seeking to stop the inclusion of uh, presidential candidate Third Way Alliance, Akuru Aukot. He then withdrew the case in the drama that we saw there with him first dropping his lawyer, getting another one, and then withdrawing. And then Gab Gabriel Mwewe also is seeking um, a report on the voter identification and result transmission system that the IBC intends to use. And then finally, there's the one by Okia Omtata. He wants a caretaker government. We spoke with him on the big story just a few, actually it was last week. But finally, there is the big one um, that is set to be heard tomorrow, despite the fact that it is um, a public holiday. We understand uh, that uh, <clears throat> the Chief Justice David Maraga has uh, directed that it be heard anyway. Three individuals have gone to court seeking to stop the repeat election all together. Those are three individuals. So we'll wait and see what happens. That'll be an important day tomorrow. So that's what's happening with the courts. But then also a lot is happening within the IEBC itself. Um, Ishmael Nyaribo joins me now to speak about this. He's a lawyer. Um, Ishmael, good evening. Thanks for joining us on the show tonight. Let me ask you this. I'm sure you followed the conversation between... Good evening, Linda. Yes. Great. You followed the conversation between Abdikadir Mohamed and Senator James <coughs> Orengo. One of them, you know, on the latest development from the IEBC, one says there's no such position as deputy national returning officer. The other says, well, there is one. There's, you know, a, a deputy returning officer at every level. So why not at the national level? What are your thoughts from what you've heard from the two so far? Yeah, Linda, thanks. You know, uh, the qualifications for a person to become a chairman of the, of the Independent Electoral Commission are spelled out in the Constitution. And uh, a very straightforward question was put forward. And uh, I, I, I heard uh, Mr. Abdikadir did not actually quite answer that. It was a, it's a challenge even to everybody, to him too. There is the, 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 a person to be appointed to be a, 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 a chairman of the Independent Electoral Commission will be a lawyer. Now, if you delegate that duty to a deputy who is not qualified then to take over as a chairman, I'm sure it has quite a number of challenges that will be met when such a position is filed in court. So it is true that uh, the chairman of the commission has powers under the Constitution and under the Elections Act and under the Independent Electoral Commission Act, but he will not be able to delegate the, uh, his responsibilities to a deputy who is not a lawyer. I really believe that uh, that should be 
a person who is an advocate of the High Court who uh, can handle such responsibilities. Yes. All right. So from what you, I, I hear you saying, you have no problem with delegating, except in this particular instance, the deputy or rather the vice chair of the IEBC does not have the qualifications to carry out the mandate of a national returning officer? Yeah, it's my belief. In fact, the chairman has no business or right to really delegate. But I was just trying to explain this mm. point that even if he had to come to a point where he is appointing a deputy, is, there is a deputy already, yeah. but the deputy being appointed is the one of the returning officer, national returning officer. That means she can actually take over the duties and responsibilities of uh, uh, the chairman of the IABC. That will have quite a bit of challenge because she is not qualified as an advocate of the High Court to right. take in or to wear those shoes of the chairman of the Independent Electoral Commission. Okay, so that is happening just this evening. There's been the poll petition. Some of them have been dismissed. Others will be heard tomorrow. Indeed, others are also set for hearing on the 27th. What do you make of this situation we find ourselves in with all of this litigation taking place in the courts just days to the election? Yeah, Linda, they are very interesting petitions. If you look at them without an eye on the 26th, actually they are, they are good uh, piece of, pieces of legislation, uh, pieces of uh, litigation in the court. And I, I am sure uh, uh, lawyers, the citizens, and, and, and everybody is happy to see what the courts will deliver as their decisions uh, between tomorrow and, uh, and, and the, 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 the other petitions that have been lined after the 27th. The, the, the one very interesting you can see is the one where the uh, petitioners are seeking to have the Honorable Borela Odinga and Kalonzo Musioka actually jailed or, uh, you know, uh, prosecuted criminally for refusing to abide by the court order. Now, one wonders whether indeed uh, such a petition will go through because indeed what Raila Odinga is saying is the Supreme Court ruling says that you should go to the poll under the law. And the belief in the NASA community is that uh, those uh, reforms needed, the basic reforms needed to comply with the Supreme Court uh, ruling have not been made. So some of these petitions are quite, uh, quite uh, interesting to watch. Yes. Yeah. Um so this is the situation in which we find ourselves. And you'd mentioned, because I, I believe Abdikadir Mohammed is still with us, you'd mentioned that he didn't really answer the question um, on, on the position of the deputy yes. national returning officer. Uh, I wonder if he's still with us and if he yes, can yes. Uh, react to that. Uh, Sophia, maybe we can get a reaction from him. Ishmael says he hasn't really answered the question. Yeah. So too. Right, uh, Yvonne, let's uh, get to that because actually we're just having that conversation uh, with Abdikadir Mohammed as we're listening to you. So again, that question comes up. Yes, uh, it is in order to mm. have uh, the vice chair of the IEBC mm. gazetted yeah. as the vice uh, deputy returning officer, if you like, yeah. but she does not have the qualifications as we mm. stand now mm. as those of the current chair. Now, uh, I have had that argument and it holds no basis for the following reasons. Number one, the chair of the commission is appointed as the chair of the commission. This is a chapter 15 commission. The vice chair is appointed as a commissioner. So she, the requirements for her is the qualifications of holding a commission job. Now, in other posts, so for example, the chief justice and the deputy chief justice, the requirements for holding the job of the chief justice and the requirements for holding the job of the Deputy Chief Justice, mm -hmm. per the Constitution and per statute, are exactly the same. In the Vice Chair of the IEBC or the other commissions, there is no appointment or hiring as a Vice Chair. You are hired as a Commissioner, and she meets all the requirements of a Commissioner. Now, once you have been appointed as a Commissioner, then the Commission elects one of their members mm -hmm. as a vice chairperson. Then she is clothed with the powers of a vice chairperson. Remember, she is not the returning officer. She is the deputy returning officer by virtue of the fact that she is the lawfully commissioned vice chairperson of the commission. Now, what is the use of having a deputy president, a deputy chief justice, a deputy chairperson of anything? It is to deputize for the chair, for the substantial holder. Mm -hmm. Now. 
in our constitution, and I'll ask my good friend to go to, to the constitution, in definition it says, if you are holding an office substantively, and somebody else comes to hold that office in an acting position, they are clothed with exactly the same powers mm -hmm. you are clothed with. That right. is exactly the wording of the constitution. Mm. So where is this conspiracy? Let me tell you where it come from, comes from. It is a desperate rush at stopping the election by any means necessary. Why are we going, taking the country through that? Look, we have seen every which way, litigation upon litigation. We have heard of caretaker government. And where in God's name does the Constitution say that after 60 days you have a caretaker government? I'm the, you just have to be shocked at these things. You have had no deputy can act for, for the substantive role. What is the good reason for having a deputy? I think we, it's time we came back to our common sense. Mm -hmm. This is an election. Kenya will exist on the 27th, on the 28th, next month. Those who want to go for elections will continue going for elections. Let us, in God's name, do the election. All right. Let us go through it. If you are not happy with it, there are court processes to go. Let us not throw every little thorn in front of the process. Okay. All right. Finally, that question and concern that was raised earlier by Senator Orengo about tomorrow being made a public holiday, why was it necessary? I, I, I think you're the best person to ask is the people who, who made that decision. But bet between me and you, mm -hmm. who has been guilty of really abusing this process? Who, who, who the police have been on alert for the last 10 months? Mm -hmm. uh, if, there, if there are people who really are unsung heroes in this thing, the security forces in this country have been on alert for 10 months. Those are young men and women. Those are sons and daughters. Those are fathers who have not had to go to there because they have to look out for our safety. Here are people who are carrying stones. They are carrying uh, machetes. Uh, the owner of Orango said uh, they don't have, have militias. What do you call the people who are rampaging through the cities of, of Nairobi, mm. destroying property, life, and, and limb? Mm. And then you go ahead and say, you see, in, 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 in law, there's something called in equity, you must come with clean hands. Yeah. If you are going to ask for the protection of the law, you must abide by the law first. You cannot be a lawbreaker who keeps on crying that the law... You cannot be a rioter who says, I have a right to demonstrate. You have a right to demonstrate, not a right to riot and destroy property. All right. You cannot be clothed with the, with the shielding of the law mm -hmm. if you are a lawbreaker. The law requires us to hold the election on the, 20, on the, on the, on the 26th. The law requires us to declare a winner on the 26th. The law avails anybody who is not happy the process to go ahead and challenge right. that lawfully. All right. Okay. All right. Many thanks. Abdi Kadir Mohammed, thank you so much uh, for your time this evening. Abdi Kadir Mohammed is the advisor to the president on constitutional matters with us tonight. Yvonne, over to you. Uh, thanks, Sophia. Ishmael, what are your final thoughts? The legal, the political environment in which we are set to hold this repeat exercise just one hour, one day and a few hours away? Thank you. By the way, I don't, uh, who is in charge? It is clear that the government is in charge. I, I, I see a lot of, uh, I don't want to say bickering, but a lot of, uh, you know, strenuous way of uh, the government uh, officers and, 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 and advisors to the president and how they really try to painfully explain some of these very simple basic things. If the president gets correct advice, if he, every time he has uh, been given the correct advice, today we could not be in this kind of uh, uh, quagmire we find ourselves in. Are you but saying you he's not given that the right he's been advice? Given advice that, uh, Sorry, are yes, you saying he's I, not given the right very, advice? Very, very. Yes, I am. I am. I, I am confident that he's not actually getting the proper support and advice by those who are surrounding him because he could have listened to dialogue. Yvonne, I mean, Yvonne, look, the Pope of the 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 Catholic Church, the highest pontiff, the highest uh, 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 person of uh, in the Catholic Church, has prayed for Kenya. The head of state is a Catholic. I believe so. I mean, this is what I, I, I have been told. So when you see the whole world really getting worried about us, is it too much to request for a dialogue, even if it means for a few more days so that people can come together as a nation? So All right, if but, you um, insist Ishmael? on advising the government and advising... Ishmael, President yes. Uhuru Kenyatta said he's open to talks, but just after the election. Yeah, but that, that, that's not the kind of talk really, uh, 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 Yvonne, that actually we need, that the talks needed 
are those ones which can prepare both sides of the divide into going to the elections with a free and honest heart. And the government is not the playing second fiddle. The government is in control of everything. There is no need why they should feel that maybe they are put in some kind of box the government is in control. And once the government is in control, it should listen to its masses from both sides, not just to maybe jubilee or listen to a certain group. No, the government is in control. And by either postponing or granting the citizens a request for dialogue, it's not too much to ask. So just this kind of narration where, you know, people are advising the head of state, you must do this, it is on 26th or no other day. Honestly, it is hurting our economy. It's hurting the people and we are becoming more disintegrated Yvonne that we could have been together if he got the correct kind of advice there is no death after 26th or 26th itself so this kind of rushing and saying this is what we want and we must forget about it and then coming out with venom as if you're really trying to uh, be defensive is unacceptable, uh, uh, Yvonne, is All unacceptable. Right. Okay. We should live together and actually know that uh -huh. the government is in control. All right. Thanks for that. And thank you for your comments and your time tonight. Ishmael Nyaribo, um, an advocate of the High Court. And, of course, my thanks as well to Senator James Arango, Abdi Kadir Mohamed, on behalf of myself and Sophia Wanuna, our lead reporter here on the show. Um, we bid you good night. This is part of our ongoing coverage, Kivumbi 2017. One day, nine hours to go. Uh, the top stories of the day up next with Linda Ogutu, including a conversation I had with the Inspector General of Police on election security preparedness. Good evening.